Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode we finally have the Explorer 1 probe core. Yay! Uh, so this is just a science core, it doesn't allow for control of this Araby upper stage, but it has a lot of science built in. It's really really light, it's 8.3 kilograms compared to the Araby core which is 60 and uh, 7,050 electric charge. I don't even know how much, how it packs so much electric charge in there. That's a lot of electric charge. It's got an antenna, it's got uh, scientific instruments, log impacts, log pressure data, analyzed telemetry, log radiation. Heck, if you put all those together with the scientific instruments, you'd probably end up with more than 8.3 kilograms, much less have the electric charge and everything. So it's wonderful. It solves everything. So, and uh, apart from that, it doesn't really need to be inside a fairing or anything like that. It can just be sticking out, as far as I know. I mean, it should be. And yeah, we've got a lot more Delta V now, uh, almost 10,900. And Explorer 1 was launched to a very high uh, orbit. Uh, we also actually have the Vanguard 1, but it's not quite as functional. It's got uh, fewer experiments, much less electric charge. And it is only 1.5 kilograms, which is great, but that doesn't actually give us much more delta V because the dry mass of the stage is a certain amount. And it doesn't, uh, you know, the difference between 60 to 8 is significant, but then you drop another 7, it doesn't really matter given the empty mass of the stage. This is a sort of empty tank right now. We can add a sounding rocket payload later on, but I really, really want to get that. Uh, solar powered satellite thing done so we slapped four solar panels on this and um, we we're going to try and make sure that we get about 300 kilometers this time so we probably need to increase our build rate because 95 days and then we have the contract done in 179 days you figure it out I would rather be able to have two shots at this just in case we have an engine failure at least two shots maybe even three shots but we don't have a lot of money to buy build points. So, well, we'll have to see. Anyway, let's uh, get one of these queued up. You can see from the lightness of the Vanguard 1 probe why Vanguard was able to get it to orbit uh, with uh, such a light rocket. But uh, it was also able to launch Vanguard 2, which is, I think, 10 kilograms, and Vanguard 3, which is 20. But, yeah. Yep, still had a little bit of a struggle with some of those. All right, so we can't really unlock any more science. Hopefully Explorer 1 will help. I renamed the rocket Explorer 1 because I'm so delighted to have it, finally. And rocket was sort of sized with it in mind in a way. Mm, we don't have enough funds to really... I guess we can just rush build it. Um, that's probably the best thing to do. 85. I want to make sure... It's done in under 60 days and with enough rollout buffer. Okay, here we go. Launch. If we're really in luck, maybe we can toss it to an extremely high orbit, like uh, high over the Earth. Probably that's 35,786 because that's geosynchronous transfer orbit. So if we can do that, we could get some more science that way. Oh, I don't want the little antennae deployed right now. Um, why are the antennae deployed? Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to activate you. That doesn't seem safe. Yeah, its antennas should not be deployed right now. I don't know what's going to happen. But, alright, I, I don't see a way to turn them off. Maybe that's just uh, FASA in this version likes to stick things out. I don't know. Alright, well, that being the case, ignition. Oh, we have one bad engine. And uh, test light is not lying this time. Okay. All right, well, uh, let's recover active vessel, I suppose. 
We'll edit it in the VAB and maybe that'll fix the problem, I don't know. Yeah, definitely just rolling it out we've seen before doesn't quite work. Uh, we still have problems, so in fact it starts ignited, which is not right. So, I don't know if I have to pull the engines off and put them back on again, or what, what will help reset this thing. I wonder if, oh, well, okay, the antennae. Start retracted. Extend antenna. Retract antenna. Well, that doesn't count as an edit, I guess. We have some spare volume here. I'm going to put three HTP here. That still doesn't count as an edit. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay, whatever. Oh, 13 seconds. It's got 13 seconds. At least there's something. I just wanted to go back to the build list. Okay, warp to complete. Let's see. No, it still has the antennas sticking out. I guess that's just how it's going to be. SES on, throw this up. Ignition. Um, they both... Okay, they really did not ignite this time. And it's just it's just the verniers on. <laughs> All right. Um we're going to have problems with the vanguards this time, huh? That's how it's going to be, huh? Um uh, we should probably rush build the other one. And let's I mean, should I build a different thing without vanguards. I don't have a whole lot of engine selection. The RD is not a good replacement. We'll see if it's a possible replacement though. It could work. Uh, a lot of Delta V. A lot of thrust weight ratio. We should probably have those secondary tanks strapped to the side of it. But yeah, it's not a bad drop-in replacement now that our our um, tonnage is more than 20. We can do more than 20 and then then we get about the same Delta V if we accept a heavier rocket. Heavy rocket does mean more rollout cost. The build time is nice. I mean nice enough. In honor of the RD, I'll call this the Rad Explorer. Let me begin to rush that a bit. Let's see. 86 days. There's 35 days left there. So I need this to finish in 50 days maximum. Let's go with that so it has time to roll out. Okay. Well, I mean, what do we do with this anyway? Shall we edit it? Shall we just roll it out again? I actually took off the engines and put new ones on last time. Maybe I'll change the orientation of the Vanguard engine. Take that. One second to make this alteration. Oh, why did it ignite already? But it didn't. Um, this is peculiar. It's just the Verniers. Test flight does not respect the fact that I, I did something and changed stuff. Oh boy, I'm worried it's gonna... It says no ignitions. I mean, uh, ignitions haven't been taken, so... Can I just... Nope. Okay. Um. Oh, shoot. Uh. <laughs> this, this was not a good thing to do. I blame test flight, honestly. Hold on a sec. Settings. I'm gonna, I'm gonna revert that. Hold on. Allow reverting flights. That is a bug. Vert to launch. I hope hope Kerbal Construction Time does not mind this. And what I'll do is I'll manually activate both engines before releasing the clamps this time if we still have the verniers go on. Yes, we do. Okay, test flight. I hate you. Okay, so I'm gonna... Oh, come on. Throttle up. Activate. Activate. SAS on. And launch. Launch. Okay. Is there any experiment I can do right here? Pressure data, telemetry. I thought there were a few more, but maybe I can only do those in space. 
And there were four different experiments that listed in the VAB. Okay, RCS on. Separation. And we've gotten rid of that fairing. I should just have it not separate, but... Oh yeah, I added a few... Well, I added a radiation anyway. That's good. Okay, now's good. Ignition. Uh, let's quickly check the radiation. Uh, nothing in the atmosphere. Okay, impact data. That's new. Near Earth. Radiation. That's not new. Okay. Okay. The AJ-10 did its thing as expected. We'll coast for a bit. It's a 1 minute and 5 second stage for the Araby. I'd like the time to apoapsis to be about 40 seconds. I figure. Okay, separation. And... Oh my god, what happened? Ignition! Get away from it! Get away from it! What on earth was that? F3. AJ-10 series early exploded due to overheating 13,000 Kelvin. <sighs> Kraken. Kraken. Totally Kraken. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get some extra height here. Let's see how much. Uh, Smarty SS, you can stop trying. Whoa, camera. That should do the trick. Well, it'll have to verify for two minutes. Yeah, it's started a countdown on the first solar powered satellite thing. Well, not geosync. Um, I can't actually throttle right now, so it's going to use up its fuel anyway. But uh, 11,000 kilometers is pretty good. We're going to beat some records. Probably beat some speed records too. I don't know. We should have gotten 9,000, right? Yeah, 9,000 we got. Okay, let's just uh, keep this up and spam the science stuff. We've got a lot of electric charge and we've got solar panels, so no reason for it to have any problems. Let's just check out Earth's biomes and then we can launch one of the backup rockets into polar orbit and get more biomes. So that piece got destroyed but we got the contract fulfilled. Okay, looking for biomes. Uh, tropics we've done but I don't know if log radiation... Yeah, yep, yep, it's uh, biome dependent. Oh, wait. Okay, log radiation. Transmit. Telemetry is also good. Impact probably doesn't matter here. Such heights. Yep, look at all those records. 6,000? Come on, you don't have a 10,000 one? Well, let's cross the Pacific and maybe we'll get some other biomes over Mexico. Desert, desert, desert. Um, radiation, yes. Telemetry, yes. Tell us all about the Van Allen radiation belts above the desert, please. I think they, oh yeah, mountains, good. Now the science is rolling in. Okay, 44.8, but still, you know. Well, Explorer 1 is going to hang out up here for an extended period of time. And we're going to have another one join it, hopefully, in polar orbit. Let's see about that. Okay, so first polar orbit satellite, don't mind if I do. Navigation satellite, it needs a Navsat payload, that's new. Well, we have space for it, but we'll hold off just a sec. Minimum inclination of 845 degrees, perigee 300. We could maybe sneak a, this sort of Navsat payload into one of the spare rockets then. Comsat payload is different. All these interesting payloads. Okay. 
That's an interesting innovation over RP0, that's for sure. Hunt, okay, so this has 100 units for NavSat, 156 units for ComSat. How much can we do without killing its Delta V? You know, we've launched it a few times. Maybe they could have figured out how to roll it out cheaper by now. Should we go with the Vanguard option? Let's see, the rollout cost is 7240 for the Vanguard one, and it's more expensive because it's got two engines on the first stage. The Rad Explorer is cheaper on both accounts. It doesn't have exactly as much Delta V, and it's heavier, oddly enough. I mean, the rollout, I thought the rollout cost was supposed to have something to do with the mass, but this one is heavier and cheaper to roll out and quicker to build so I don't understand I don't understand the rollout cost at all I mean I accept that rollout takes some cost that's fine it's the, it's the part where it's many times the cost of the rocket that I have a little bit of a problem with okay so this uh, we'll need this to be a high pressure tank now I know I haven't upgraded to tank 3 I might, I mean, if there's a tank 4, I'll just skip over tank 3, to be honest. We'll see. But then again, this max utilization, 95%. This one, 99% of that. Uh, service module 1. I haven't actually figured out what service module 1 is supposed to... I can hold satellite payload, sounding rocket payload, yeah. But it looks like it can hold other payloads except for the sounding rocket payload, that's why. But can this hold the payload we need or do we need one of those okay it looks like it looks like that's what the the service module is for I don't know if a satellite payload covers the commsat and navsat but I assume so wow these service modules cost quite a lot as far as tooling is concerned huh nose cone I'm pretty sure we have a tooled version of this no? There we go. Um, yeah, wow. Hmm. That's a expensive sort of thing, isn't it? Let's just check that I can take the ComSat. Okay, ComSat, WeatherSat, NavSat. 24 liters only. So that's not going to be enough, right? We need 100 or more. Utilization is only 50. I think uh, the requirement was 130 something. Let's have 145. How much mass is that? Ooh, that really kills our delta V. Okay, so we can't really use this rock. Wait, no, that's not counting some delta V somewhere. Okay. Now, let's see about putting that stuff in. It still pretty kills the delta V, yeah. Hmm, NavSat? NavSat's better. NavSat's not as harsh. I'm not gonna tool this. This is going to probably be a one-off tank anyway. Still haven't added my textures into this. Probably ought to. Yeah, let's put gold foil on it. Why not? 100 units. We can do 45 degrees. Seems doable. It didn't even require solar panels, so that's good. Upgrade wise, we're still waiting on the launch pad and tracking station upgrades. And we've still got some science cube, though we could we could queue up some more science. Let's do that. Because we get the upgrade points. Hmm. Basic avionics and probes. Ex more explorers and grabs and transits and all these are from Raider Nix US probes. But better solar panels, lunar range communication, the communitron. But it's more important to see what other stuff requires. Gina is not a bad thing. Orbital rocketry. There are various upgrades to engines that I don't have and might never get to. That, that has possibilities if it's cheap enough to unlock. Basically, this RD-0105 is like the equivalent of a 
of the um, of that what was that LV909 in stock the Terrier engine so it, it can get a lot of mileage this is another model of it that's even better looking yeah I think that's worthwhile uh, let's hold on a sec supersonic flight mature supersonic flight well, that's going to go the typical way of things. Hydrazine RCS propellant would be awesome. And the 1 kN thruster is the most important engine of all. Does it have they nerfed it? <laughs> have they nerfed it? That's an important question. Hmm. Doesn't say anything about limited ignitions. Doesn't say anything about test flight. Heat shields, I feel might be helpful mm, these aren't these aren't people level heat shields human rated heat shields are over here down the line hmm it's a question between efficient kerosene upper stages which is what we have here and heat shields we'll get more science I think I will queue up this. We really don't have too much call for the heat shields just yet. We need more sciences first. Speaking of things we can unlock. The next science though, we'll have to upgrade the the R&D building to actually unlock stuff beyond this line. Actually beyond this line. I wonder why those are so big. I guess they're required for a lot of stuff. Material science and electronics research makes sense. Okay, rolling out our Polar Explorer. Those antennae though. <laughs> uh, something about animations got messed up between versions between 1.2.2 and 1.3.1. Affects the landing gear of stuff like Buran and the the old CSS shuttle as well. Okay. Well, just remember, go polar. Um, of course, we're not supposed to go polar orbits from Cape Canaveral. So the question is, who do I dislike more? No, <laughs> we'll, we'll go north and give them a show. They like shows. Everybody likes shows. I think uh, that'll be good. Gives us a little bit more water before we hit land on the northern side. Okay. Ignition. Oh, so much for plans. It's not running. Okay, 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 okay. It's not like it doesn't charge us anything. We still have to roll it out again, and that's an additional cost here. It costs more than the rocket does to roll it out, so... Really, maybe I should just recover and build another one anyway. But for all I know, it's just going to do the same thing. Okay, well, we've got the Verniers and that engine on. Well, activate that one. Throttle up, SAS on, and release the clamps. Release the clamps. <sighs> it's so weird. All right, well, anyway. I have come up with a workaround. It's fine. And going north. Okay. Looking good ish. See, it's safe. I mean, by the time we get over land, really, it's gonna be. It's gonna be alright. We'll be practically in orbit. Okay, separation. <laughs> Forgot to just have the fairing not stage. Ooh, oh, oh, wrong heading, wrong heading. Sun peeking out. We still need to get five more degrees of inclination. I think we'll do that just by pointing north, but we will see. Throttle up. Ignition. <laughs> times 
Um, we're still above water, but it's possible we'll get some other biomes. I believe it was just 300 kilometers, right? It doesn't actually say. Maybe there's no minimum. But, best practice. We'll just go for 300. Okay, we are within the required inclination range. And that's the end of that. Oh, I, I took too long. Okay, rotate, rotate, rotate. Forward, forward, forward. Forest. We haven't done forest before. And separation. And... Oh. Yeah, get away from the AJ-10. Huh. We seem to have an AJ-10 exploding problem. Apparently from the exhaust of the RCS gets it to 5,000 Kelvin. Hmm. Well, we are definitely in orbit, but we're not going to be beyond 300 kilometers. Okay, let's not puff that. Um, okay, I have to manually hold down N in order to counteract that. But um, does it is it satisfied? Okay, checking for stable orbit. Stable orbit confirmed, and we have our polar orbit satellite. Excellent. All sorts of completion rewards checked. And um, we could get to... I mean, we could boost our orbit using the HTP. I think at an uh, apoapsis of 7,400 kilometers, we could raise that periapsis pretty high. But uh, looking good. We're over water again. We got the forest science. Let's see if we can get some poles or something. No connection. Yeah, that would be a problem over the poles, though. Well, there is the whole remote, uh, remote tech flight computer, and I could program it to take the science at the right time if I had action group the science. Ice caps. Well, shucks. It would be nice to get... Oh, wait, we've got a connection to... Svalbard. So, log radiation, yes. Analyzed telemetry, yes. Impacts, no. Pressure data, no. Okay, there's ice caps. Can we get tundra? Water, huh? Lots and lots of water up here. Tundra. And we still have connection. Transmit. Transmit. Anything else? Taiga. Whoop, 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 whoop. I like Taiga. Coolest biome name. Grasslands. We haven't actually done grasslands. I'm satisfied. I think we've done enough. I'm sure there's more. Okay, I'm not sure there's more, but there might be more. But I'm going to leave it be for now. We got what we came for. Alright, that's enough success for one episode, I think. I don't want to push my luck. We will save the first navigation satellite contract, I'll pick up, and the first sun synchronous orbit satellite, I'll pick that one up too, for the next episode. And then after that, I am looking to see if we can do some of the lunar stuff, because we we can build bigger launchers, you know, 20 tons is no longer a limit. And we've got the Explorer Core, so we should be able to send stuff to the moon. The main thing is patch conics. I would like to be able to see us make it to the moon. And the hydrazine thruster would be key as well, because then we can fine-tune our approach to the moon. Those seem like they're going to take a while, but we do have the upgrade points, so I'm going to pour that on there. And we could buy some more, but I'll leave that be for now. So we've improved the situation. Early flight control. Let me see, which one had the hydrazine? Early flight control has the hydrazine. Okay, so I think that's what I want most. Satellite era science. Uh, it's nice to have extra science. But it's also nice to fill contracts. Hmm. But this will be done pretty quick. So, okay, I'll take that first. 
All right, so this is the situation. We have two rockets building and two contracts to fulfill. We can build some more rockets if necessary, but these will be the first two that we try. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.